Well, good afternoon. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Okay, I'm going to get caught up now. So, uh, I, you know, people uh, have said, you know, hey, don't worry about it. But uh, you know what? I got to tell you, I really enjoy doing this. And so, uh, get lazy here and there, but I really do enjoy doing this. And uh, I've had a lot of people come up and tell me how much they enjoy it. And that, I, I, I enjoy, I enjoy doing it. So, uh, thank you in advance. So. Here we go. I'm having tea once again. So, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray you're all doing well. And, um, you know, Pastor Tim used to talk about a calling. Uh, you know, you, you're, you're called to do this, called to do that. And, uh, you know, as many of you know, I had thought about going into ministry as a vocation, and uh, some of you have uh, heard me preach. We'll call it preaching for the sake of conversation, but uh, many of you have heard me doing that, and, and thank you for the compliments. And uh, uh, but but anyway, I, I when this whole pandemic started, uh, you know, churches had shut down and people weren't able to worship, and I just I, I guess you know I, I felt a calling that I needed to do this, and. Uh, and, and and so many people have uh, given me such kind words uh, for for reading these scriptures every day, and you know it gets me reading scripture every day, and uh, and my thinking was that I really enjoy uh, in our worship service. Uh, you know we have the Old Testament reading, the Psalm Psalm lesson, the New Testament, and then the Gospel reading. I really enjoy hearing scripture read out loud. And I figured I wasn't the only one. So that's that's how this whole got started. And so I really do enjoy doing it. So grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, if this is the first time seeing this or you're wondering where I'm getting the readings from, it's from the Treasury of Daily Prayer. And it is a just a great, great book. There's a bunch of good devotional books out there. But I got this from Concordia Publishing. And... Um, it just follows every day, you know. Every day there's a date, so I'll show you. Like today, I'm going to read August, you know, August 30th. Uh, there are others out there that follow the church calendar. This just has readings every day, and you just you just keep going. So there's an, uh, a psalm, psalmody, Old Testament, and New Testament, and then there's a prayer, and sometimes there's a writing. There is a hymnody. And I might share that one today. So anyway, let's get started with today's. So today's psalmody lesson is Psalm 29, 1 through 4, and then it skips over to 10 and 11. So, as always, may God bless the reading of His Word. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Worship the Lord in splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Praise the Lord, absolutely. Um... The Old Testament lesson for today is 1 Kings 12, uh, 20 through 13, 5, and then it skips over 33 and 34. So, And when all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the, the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. When Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen warriors to fight against the house of Israel to restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God. Say to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people. Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up or fight against your relatives, the people of Israel. Every man return to his home, for this thing is from me. So they listened to the word of the Lord, and went home again according to the word of the Lord. <clears throat> 
Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived there, and went out from there and built Peniel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will turn back to the house of David. If this people go up to offer sacrifices in the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will turn again to their Lord, to Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and return to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. Oops. And he said to the people, You have gone up to Jerusalem long enough. Behold your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And he set one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. Then this thing became a sin, for the people went as far as Dan to be before one. He also made temples on high places, and appointed priests from among all the people, who were not of the Levites. And Jeroboam appointed a feast on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, like the feast, the feast that was in Judah, and he offered sacrifices on the altar. So he did in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places that he had made. He went up to the altar that he had made in Bethel on the fifteenth day in the eighth month, in the month that he had devised from his own heart, and he instituted a feast for the people of Israel and went up to the altar to make offerings. I see no possible way this could go wrong. And behold, a man of God came out of Judah by the word of the Lord to Bethel. Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make offerings. And the, and the man cried against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a son shall be born to the house of David, Josiah, by name, and he, and he shall sacrifice on you the priest of the high places who make offerings on you, and human bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign that the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be torn down, and the ashes that are on it shall be poured out. And when the king heard the saying, of the man of God, which he cried against the altar of Bethel, Jeroboam stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him! And his hand, which he had stretched out against him, dried up, so that he could not draw it back to himself. The altar also was torn down, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign that the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. After this thing, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil way, but made priest for the high places again from among all people. Any who would, he ordained to be priest of the high places. And this thing became sin to the house of Jeroboam, so as to cut it off and to destroy it from the face of the earth. Ooh. Hey, boy. <laughs> all right, uh, the New Testament lesson for today. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 24. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty has overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, as their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urge Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, so that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also be genuine, is genuine. <clears throat> for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, so that, so that you by, this, by his poverty might become rich. 
and in this matter I give my judgment. This benefits you, who, a year ago, started not only to do this work, but also to desire to do it. So now finish doing it as well, so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by your completing it, uh, completing it out of what you have. For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. For, for I do not mean that others should be, er, er, should be eased on, you, uh, on you, you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness, as it is written, whoever gathered much has nothing left over, and whoever gathered little has no lack. But thanks be to God, who put into the heart of Titus that same earnest care I have for you. For he has not only accepted our appeal, but, but being himself very earnest, he is going to you of his own accord. With him we are sending the brother who is famous among all churches for his preaching of the gospel. And not only that, but he has been appointed by the churches to travel with us as we carry out this act of grace that is being ministered by us for the glory of the Lord himself and to show our good will. We take this course so that no one should, be, should blame us about the generous gift that is being administered by us. For we, for we aim at what is honorable not only in the Lord's sight but in also the sight of man. And with them we are sending our brother, whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters, but who is now more earnest than ever because of this great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my, my partner and fellow worker for your benefit. And as our brothers, they are messengers of the churches, the glory of Christ. So give proof before the churches of your love and our boasting about you to these men. And this is the word of the Lord. And uh, just an example of the hymnody. Uh, there's just a couple of verses here. It's in the LSB number 389. And uh, I don't know the music, so I'll just read it. He undertakes a great exchange, put on our human frame, and in return gives us his realm, his glory and his name, his glory and his name. Let all together praise our God. And we'll read the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have called us to, to be your children and heirs of your gracious promises in Christ Jesus. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may forsake all covetous, covetous desires and the inordinate love of riches. Deliver us from the pursuit of passing things, that we may seek the kingdom of your Son and trust in his righteousness, and so find blessedness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Well, we had a few days off because uh, I thought the hurricane was going to come here. So tomorrow's Monday and we get back with it. So I'll be up here uh, 6.30ish in the morning, so it'll be a lot earlier in the mornings, uh, just to let you know. During the week, it'll be fairly early, um, but on the weekends, it'll probably be a little bit later, but I'll get it in the mornings. So uh, anyway, y'all have just a great week. So with that, be safe, be happy, and be blessed, and we will see you tomorrow on Coffee in the Word. Bye-bye. God bless.